Originally I was born in Cuba and my family lived in Miami for a few years and then uh, we moved to California and I, I grew up in California. Family and food are intertwined for me because most of my happiest memories with my extended family, even when I was a little child in Cuba, happened around my grandmother's table. Uh, there was always family and food are, are uh, basically married for me. The typical ingredients in Cuban dishes, you start with what we call the trifecta of Cuban food perfection, which is uh, garlic, onion, bell pepper, and you saute that in olive oil, and already that's the beginning of every wonderful Cuban dish that, that you're gonna wanna have. And so they would ask me, Mom, can you please write these things down? So I started blogging and writing my stories down, and then I started cooking and taking pictures, and the rest is kind of history. That's how my blog sort of started. I would describe myself as a life blogger because I write about my entire life, my my family, my kids, my extended family, what I had for breakfast, what I'm doing that day. So I write about a lot of things. And once a year, there's a conference type of a thing in Miami and it's called Cuba Nostalgia. And I was going to Cuba Nostalgia and people were anxious to meet me, if you can believe it. They have just met me online. They wanted to meet me in person and I thought, I'm going to take my recipes and collect them and put them in a book form. So I started researching the best way to do that and I found Blurb and boy was I happy because I could post my color photographs, I could leave the stories about the food in there. It was just really easy for me to do and I published the book and <sighs> touching the pages and they were beautiful, it made me deliriously happy. It felt like it was so much bigger than me. I took a ton of copies with me to Miami and I sold out really quickly. So then I was hooked. Today I'm making picadillo. And I'm gonna start with the trifecta of Cuban cooking, which is the onion, the bell pepper and the garlic, okay? So I'm just gonna start with uh, trimming up this onion. The best part about Cuban cooking is just when you start putting these three together. It almost doesn't matter what comes after that because this is the happiest part, is the onion and the pepper and the garlic. So I'm just gonna dice the onions. They don't have to be teeny tiny pieces, but just uh, small enough you can do this in a food processor, but you know, there's something about just uh, the motion of trimming the onions and dicing them this small. It makes me feel like I would if uh, I was in my grandmother's kitchen. She would go through this motion, the same exact motion. It makes me uh, feel connected to that other generation. If you don't inhale too quickly, you won't cry either when you're doing the onions. It's a trick. You don't, you're just you're breathing through your mouth and not your nose. Because when it goes up your nose, it's like tear gas. I think this is plenty of onions. I'm going to split it up. I'm going to make two big pans of the picadillo. So I'm going to split up all of these onions. And I wish you could smell how it's going to, you know, the aroma that it gives off when you're cooking it in the olive oil. It's kind of fantastic. So here's my beautiful bell peppers. I'm not gonna use any of the seeds, so I'm just gonna trim off the sides. You can also use red peppers in this dish. So uh, I just like the way the green pepper looks. Uh, the red pepper gives it a good flavor also, but it doesn't make me as happy as the green. You should have a really awesome knife to do this so that it just becomes kind of an easy, it just should go through the peppers like butter. There's something kind of zen to doing this. Like I said, especially if you have a really great knife, that you just kind of cut and you get into kind of a flow and you can just be thinking about anything else. And I think that's what I love about cooking, that it just, I relax and then I just, just let my mind wander. Uh, so this is where I do my meditation. <laughs> but don't tell anybody.
So uh, you gotta have the garlic. And I err on the side of too much garlic. I'll just trim the ends off and then use the knife to smash them. So that takes the peel right off. And then I'm gonna uh, dice them up. Because it's all gonna mix together. I wish this was Smell-O-Vision because you would really love this when it all comes together. If you get a, a stainless steel spoon and you rub your fingers on it, it takes the garlic smell right out. I'm taking the pan over. Don't be stingy with the olive oil. We're gonna uh, take the onion and the pepper and the garlic and we're gonna put it into the hot oil. Now I'm just going to uh, get this uh, cooking so that it's nice and translucent, a little bit soft, but not cooked all the way through. When we make the final dish, we're gonna be browning the ground beef. We're gonna want it to be, uh, you almost don't wanna know that the onion is there. You're, not, you're gonna taste it, but you don't wanna be very, you know, chunky and, and crunchy. Here's your sofrito. I'm gonna add the tomato sauce, the tomato paste, the oregano, the cumin, all the spices, everything here. And then I'm going to brown the ground beef in the other pan. And then I'm going to marry the two, and it's going to be fantastic. I'm also going to add some dry white wine. And the recipe is in the book, but uh, I'm not measuring. I just go by, by how it feels. I'm gonna add the oregano, cumin, salt and pepper, and that's basically it. While this is browning, this is going to uh, turn into the best sauce you've ever had. And at the very end, I'm going to add the, uh, the olives and the raisins. I, I leave them towards the very end and then let the whole thing stew together. It's gonna be fantastic.